Apple upping its investment in the United States. The tech giant pledging an additional $100 billion to the country by bringing more of its supply chain and advanced manufacturing to America. This is on top of the $500 billion the company is already planning to spend by opening a factory in Texas to further its push to develop AI servers. One major goal in all of this, avoiding tariffs. As a part of this, we're launching Apple's American manufacturing program. It will spur even more production right here in America for critical components used in Apple products all around the world. If you're building in the United States or have committed to build, without question committed to build in the United States, there will be no charge. In other words, we're not going to be charging, so a lot of countries, a lot of companies are leaving various other places and they're coming to the United States. Now, this move would not fulfill the president's demand that the company make a uh, make iPhones rather in America. Google is dropping a massive one billion dollars on AI education in our country. It's teaming up with over 100 universities and community colleges, including the University of Michigan, to deliver cash, cloud credits and free access to advanced AI tools. Over the next three years, students will get premium access to Gemini Advanced, Deep Research, Notebook LM, and VO3, all at no cost. The goal, level the playing field for AI education and prepare students for a workforce that's evolving quickly. Tara. Well, Rupp, artificial intelligence isn't coming. It's already here, as we know, and it's shaking up everything from the classroom to the workplace. The AI boom, creating new jobs, killing off others, forcing schools to really rethink how they teach, too. John Patterson is here. He's with that random agency, and he joins us here to sift through it all. And, you know, John, half the people seem to be scared of it. Half of people love it. Um, is it coming for our jobs, the AI, or is it just fear-mongering, in your opinion? Um, I think it's a little bit of both, really. I, you know, I think there will be some industries that are impacted by it, right? Especially those that rely on large volumes. Like what? Of, Which, what kind of industry? Right. So, I mean, I think you're looking at, you know, typical content creation industries, right? People that are creating large volumes of content on a regular basis. Like us? Uh, <laughs> potentially like us. <laughs> yeah. um, also folks that are doing heavy amounts of research, right? I mean, so knowledge-based industries could be really affected because what we're seeing is these tools are really, really powerful right. at being able to condense large volumes of information and then create content based on that in seconds so if you you know if you have ai basically solving math problems writing your essays and doing everything that you're you would learn in school what is there left to teach to kids i mean what should we as teachers or educators be doing for our children instead yeah i mean i think it's important to make sure that kids understand how to use these tools because it's going to be table stakes for them as they move into their careers and into further in education i think what we really need to do is make sure that we're encouraging them to continue to make connections with people right because these tools are so engaging and they're designed to keep us interacting with them for as long as they possibly can. And, and that's a problem. We're all on social media and right now, how do you know what is real and what's not? I mean, there's a lot of fake right now because of AI. Oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. And I think that, you know, we're in a period of time when it's probably the most dangerous because you have people able to create content that may be misinformed, right? right? Or, or designed to misinform. And you have a, a large group of people that may not be educated enough to understand what's real and what's fake yet. Well, how do you keep trust though? How do you know? Was there anything specific that you look for? Yeah, I mean, so you're looking for things that uh, appear to be off, right? So if you're, you know, watching a video, and I think this is probably where deep fakes or the misinformation yeah. is most dangerous, you know, look for those little glitches that a human wouldn't do, right? You know, they wouldn't use that phrasing. They may not carry themselves in that way. They may not use that tone of voice. Well, you know, in your business, you really do help people, content creators with social media or websites. What is, for, local, for businesses that you help navigate, what is the one key piece of information you are giving them to help them get through this and, and yeah I'm, advice. I, I think it's always you know trust but verify uh, you know these systems on average hallucinate meaning they create something totally fake about 30 percent of the time yeah. and that can be really you know dangerous if you're a small business that's heavily relying on this for your marketing materials or to understand your business there's a high likelihood that it could just be wrong well how do you set yourself apart though when people have all basically the same information and they it's all coming from AI right I mean I think that's where you have to lean into your human story right or what makes you unique as a small business you mm -hmm. know so like for example we're a family-owned business and that's a key differentiator for us right AI can't replicate that no they can't and uh, it is something though that 
kids are using in school and going back to that or, or when they're, I don't know, whatever they may be doing, if it's something for work or not. We're seeing even people use it for their law. I mean, when they're going in for their cases, their court cases, <laughs> yeah. I, there's a fine line with the legalities and what you can and cannot do, but we still don't even, it seems like we haven't even really map that out yet. We're still navigating that, right? Because uh, the reality is this kind of scary is that the people that actually build these tools, they don't fully understand how they work. All right, well, we're going to look at this right now. Here are some ways you can stay ahead of AI and uh, right there, there are some free courses right now. Absolutely, there's lots of free information. I mean, also the tools themselves will teach you how to use them. And you mentioned this, focus on the skills or what the human story may be, creativity and leadership and Absolutely. finding your what, niche? Your niche, right? What makes you unique? Uh, what about uh, you, you know, tools to boost the pro productivity. Give an example of that, how you could do yeah, that. Yeah, so like for example, I mean, we'll use something that maybe somebody would use in their personal life. You know, we use it for meal planning, okay. right? So, you know, we have young kids and they can be picky and we're tr when you're trying to incorporate different types of foods. Um, it can help you develop recipes. It can help you plan and shop for ingredients even. Right, but it, we can't be scared of it. We have to lean mm -hmm. in cannot be scared. So we have to make sure we know how to, to use it, like it, differentiate, so we can navigate this new world we're in. Absolutely, because it's not going away anytime soon. Thanks, John. Yeah, John Patterson you. joining us. Thank you.